Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. I'm your host, Jez FM. The Magical Learning Podcast is a podcast that looks at important topics in business and life and talks about them in a fun and lighthearted way. Uh, this week is another in our edition I'm calling Author Corner, which is Danette's one-on-one chats with other authors. Our Director of Learning, Danette Fenton Menzies, is an author in of herself and has released the book, The Adaptable Leader, which for those on the video will be able to see. Um, it's an amazing book. And so Danette's chatting with other authors kind of about their sort of up and coming books, but also a little bit about their own journeys. So today we're talking to Bill Withers. Bill Withers is a SME owner leader, um, and he's an, an amazing conversation. Danette gets a lot of really practical tips. So if you're in the small business space, he actually talks about how much that's a superpower. Uh, and he gives you some really important tips around that. And then also, he also discusses succession and understanding succession, that it's not something that can just happen in one year. It's a long process. It may even be a decade or more. So understanding succession thinking. He is, of course, um, the author of Succession Thinking, and you can go to find out a bit more about him on successionthinking.com. But without any further ado, here's our conversation on Northern Corner between Danette and Bill Withers. Have a magical week. Hello and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast. Today you can see that I have a guest with me, Bill Withers. Um, But before we get Bill to introduce himself, I'd love to see how your week's been, Bill. Well, pretty good because I I came back from uh, my holidays away, which is both going up to the Daintree and seeing my family. Um, and we went back down to our place where we live, which is uh, south of Perth at a place called Eagle Bay, mm. and we made sure everything was okay after a few storms had gone through and everything. And then I came, we came back, and Deb and I had a very big weekend because we looked after our three granddaughters so, nice. so that uh, my daughter and her husband could go east. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're three, five, and seven so wow. we were toast by uh yes. by sunday night <laughs> but uh and then now i'm um i've been doing a bit of succession thinking work so nice. which is all associated with you know the um podcasts and interviews and uh so yesterday i was on disrupt radio and oh, nice. um, today i'm with you and then tomorrow i'm on another podcast and um, yes, I'm doing lots of writing um, nice. and articles associated with this topic of succession thinking. So that's my week. Awesome. So, Bill, that segues beautifully into getting you to introduce yourself and, and letting our listeners and viewers know a little bit more about you. Sure. Well, I'm um, a West Australian country boy. From My nice. origins are in a town called Kununurra, which um, yes. I was brought up in the 60s uh, up there. It, um, it's about 3,500 kilometres by road from Perth, but it's still in Western Australia. So it's, uh, it was a long way from anywhere. Um, so, you know, that's where I, uh, uh, my folks were in small business, uh, in Kununurra, many, many different types of small business. Nice. Um, and um, so that's my sort of origins. And then I was a uh, very non-committed uh, student at school. I was, uh, you know, I, in actual fact, I'm an anti-authoritarian. I am I really don't like, you know, authoritarian systems. And yes. I went to a boarding school. Um, oh, out. So in the 1970s, that was, uh, you know, not a wonderful experience for me and I and I spent most of my time just fighting authority so my uh I I didn't do well at school but I did go back to university when I was about after doing a range of other working in factories and stuff I um by about 20 I was uh back at university did a software I did surveying and mapping and cartography but I discovered uh software engineering so that's where I put all my efforts and came out and I've, I, I was about 23, joined a one-man band and said, well, look, I'll, I'll join you as long as I can become an owner. And so by about, right. that was with a guy called Charlie Bass. And then I was about 27, I think, I became a owner um, nice. of that business. And then Charlie, by about 30 or 31, Charlie went off and did other things. 
And I, uh, that was really the beginning of my true entrepreneurial life because I said, well, let's take this from being a consulting business and turn it into a software company. And nice. that's what we did. And then by about uh, 35, I, we founded Acquire. And Acquire was founded in 1996. And that's when, you know, that software company ended up growing to, you know, I think we had, you know, at its largest, about 120 people. Uh, we had 28 different nationalities. We had nice. seven offices in six countries. We had, um, you know, we had a complex, complex business. Um, and, uh, and, and it was while I was building this company to deploy geoscientific information management technology which, believe it or not, I was very passionate about that at one stage of my Love life. Love it. But I, my passions changed and I became more fascinated by how do you actually build a global SME, you know? Mm-hmm. And I had the good fortune to be deploying uh, enterprise software into corporations. And what I could see was nothing but dysfunction. And yet I was told this was the place where you find the wonderment of leadership and culture. And so I couldn't, I couldn't square that circle. Yep. And so I just kept asking more and more and more questions and had the good fortune that we were doing well in our business. We ended up becoming number one in our niche. In well, the world. nice. Congrats. And yeah. Yeah. So still to this day, I don't think anybody would argue that in that particular niche that we, we, we were sort of the premium player. Um, but what it meant is that I had some funds available to me to, instead of doing uh, research and development of our products, I could do what I called commercial research and development, which meant that I, around this topic of governance and stewardship, I gave myself a large sum of money to go and research it and how to do it. And that's how Acquire provided the opportunity for me to experiment to to deliver the to to discover succession thinking, and succession thinking is now taken to the world through the company we founded in 2014, which is called Adapt. So Adapt takes the product offerings to deliver succession thinking, but succession thinking is a way of thinking and a mindset and a logic, right? And Lovely. it's and I, I want, want to make it very very clear, uh, succession thinking. At this stage, <clears throat> yes. is, is is for SMEs, yes. small medium enterprises, and and then I have some. Currently, I have some experiments running with SMSEs, which are small medium social enterprises. But Ooh. it is not. It is not. This is not for for corporations. Yes, I can't see how succession thinking can be deployed. Because of the disconnect between leadership and ownership. Mm, yep, that makes you total see, sense. You, to does me. that make yes. total sense? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. we have in in SMEs, we have a superpower. Just yeah. nobody knows that we have this superpower, and the superpower is that all the decision rights are in the room, and, and totally. that, that creates uh, uh, an incredible opportunity as long as we harness it. And unfortunately. And I hopefully I'm not going too far in my introduction, but hopefully, okay. you know, this this problem that we keep trying to, we keep mixing up apples and oranges, mm-hmm. right? We keep thinking that a corporation and an SME are actually the same thing, where in actual fact they're vastly different. It's totally different. Totally different. But all of our business education, all of our universities, just about mm-hmm. everybody says actually the place to find the the leadership knowledge and capability is in the corporation. But you take a leader from that environment, put it in an SME, and they go, what is going on here? Right. <laughs> totally true. So there you go. There's my, <laughs> there's my intro. Oh, I love that intro, Bill. Oh, we're going to have such, such good discussions. So... Tell us a little bit more about your book, Succession Thinking. Um, you know, what sort of started you on the idea of writing the book? And just let our listeners and viewers know a little bit more about your book. Yeah, okay. So the, the book is really the end of 20 years of doing that nice. research and development. So it's the 
it's the uh, summation of everything that was discovered, both inside a choir and then in the 10 years of working with SME owners uh, and the research determined that, that, that I picked up. And basically what I've I used to talk about the eight successions when I was back in a choir and yes. I was talking about the, the succession of ownership and the succession of leadership and the succession of culture. Anyway, this eight successions logic that I built, um, there was one person in the world that seemed to really get into it and really understand it, um, but only one. Yep. <laughs> so whenever I, when I first took that out in ADAPT, Everyone said, what is this guy talking about? Yeah. Because what people do is they think that that word, and maybe this is my problem, but succession is something that happens at the end. Ah, uh, yep. And so consequently people Which say, shouldn't be. they hear succession, they say they, they append planning. Yeah. And I go, oh, yeah, but that's, that's, a, that's a crazy concept, succession yes. planning. It's, yes. it's From what I can see, it's too simplistic, too late, and poorly yes. thought through. I mean, yes. I've not seen, you know, people saying, oh, okay, I'm 65, now I'll do a succession plan. Well, that's insane, right? I mean, if you're going to if you're going to actually hand over to others, then you've got to have created the environment and the conditions for that 10 years yes. before. Totally. So, so what I'm what I'm trying to advocate for is that succession thinking is a way we build businesses in SMEs. Right. That. And so yeah. that that so the, the book is really just to inspire SME owners to say, one, we have a superpower. Two, you know, if we have that, if we harness that superpower, we are actually the entity that really should be harnessed by all governments in the world as the future of capitalism. I mean, just uh, unfortunately, the the unfortunately I'm, I I don't even buy equities anymore I just do yes. not think that that is the way that we're going to get to a place where we can integrate an economic engine engine with good social outcomes that's my yes. honest yep. view and I just feel that you know yes that's the current state of the world I'm not having a crack at the people that are in that world obviously there's a lot of food I'm just saying that the SME, um, by its very nature, tends to distribute power, distributes wealth. It distributes, yeah. you know, and and it 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 uh, vitalizes or enriches communities regionally, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So I, I can't see a downside to it. Yeah. And yet, I don't see why we we don't, as a community, don't really get behind these ideas of harnessing SMEs. Anyway, there you go. I mean, I, get a bit I love that. that. Totally agree with you as well. So yes. Uh, yes. having run businesses for 26 years, so totally, totally agree. Yeah, in your years of experience and, and that, what have you seen that most businesses get wrong? So people start out with all this enthusiasm, et cetera, and then, Stuff doesn't always work, and we know the stats around businesses folding and stuff like that. So, curious, what do you reckon? Do we do businesses get wrong? Well, I think the the first thing I would say is that we need to have the right mindset, nice. right, at the beginning. So, what is that mindset? And that, let me just say that one of the things I've observed is that the people that start an SME right? I have the highest of respect for. And why do I have that high level of respect? Because they've determined that there's an underserved need. They're going to go and have a crack at solving it. And just about 99.9% .9 of SMEs are founded with their own capital. Yes. So yes. they're going to deploy their own capital to go and try and solve a problem, you know. But what tends to happen is that at the start, that highly strategic mind that decided to do that, because that's a big, big, big step, then gets hijacked by the operational demand of the business. So the big thing is that if people, the first principle of succession thinking is seek role clarity. So nice. if everyone knows I'm starting a business, I'm going to have an owner role, I'm going to have a director role, I'm going to have an organizational leader role. I'm going to have a team leader role. And I'm going to have a range of technician roles. But I've also got one other one, which is a cultural leader role. Now, yes. that stack of six is in every SME in the world. However, 
most people will say, okay, I'm founding a business and my name is Danette. And I'm Danette and you're John. Okay. But if people actually realize the complexity that they have on day one of a business, that even if you're, a, I use role clarity in a sole trading business now, because I'm, I'm post my days of being a leader of ADAPT. I'm yes. still an owner of ADAPT. And then I do my succession thinking work over here as a sole trader, but oh, I still use role logic in yes. all that I do. Mm. So that's the thing, you know, if people knew that and then they said, oh, okay, I'm always going to allocate some time to being an owner. And I'm also always going to allocate some time to being an organizational leader where as an owner, it's vision and capital as an mm. organizational leader, it's the strategist. Now the habits and the practices of owner organizational leader are vastly different to the habits and practices of a technician. Yes. And so, so what I would recommend to everyone is build good, healthy practices to retain your capacity as an owner organizational leader, as you build your business, because then you will always be building habits that enhance the strategic capability within you. Whereas unfortunately the, where, where we all begin our businesses as, as the, not all, but the vast majority as technicians. I was a software engineer that knew yes. how to solve problems in mines and in, you know, with geoscientists, you know, that yes. was my, that was what I was good, good at. Right. And so, so consequently it's no mistake that the thing that I ended up doing was solving geoscience data problems. Right. So you come out and I'd never even used the L word for myself until I had 30 people working for myself. And wow. I'd never, I'd never thought of myself as a leader. Yes. I mean, I had 30 people. I'd never thought of myself as a leader. You know, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the I love reality. That, Bill. <laughs> Sorry. I love that, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it just is, you know, you just, yes. just all of a sudden wake up one day and you know, you, you just have these, I remember having in my book, I referenced this, I had 30 people. We were building two different businesses at the time because we had the, uh, I won't go into all of that, but we had the, and then I had this brilliant idea of every Friday, we'll all get together in a room and just share what we're doing, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, and then, uh, you know, everybody would go around the room. And what I noticed is that by five o'clock, I was depressed because, Pretty much everyone's just saying, oh, this is crap, Bill. This isn't Ooh, good enough. And this is this. And, and, but that's business, right? Yes, business. totally. One, I, I do reflect and think, well, it was great that they actually told the truth. Yes. You know? and, and, totally. so, <laughs> and so, so <laughs> but what it did was it inspired me to say, well, okay, how do we fix this? And that's, mm. you know, the, um, so anyway, I'll pause it there because I was... Uh, no, that was a great answer, and I yeah. love that insight. It's so true, those different hats, et cetera. Oh, love that. In in your book, you talk a little bit about um, businesses and owners setting up their business to thrive with or without them. And so I'm curious, what are some things that owners could do to actually help their businesses succeed with or without them? Well, here's the first thing, right? We The reason why succession thinking is about how you build your business is because mm -hmm. Amy Edmondson, and I'm sure you you know, yes. I, I, her concept of trust, I just think is so elegant to yeah. have psychological safety and accountability trust. So the, the, for the conditions of any form of handover and a handover is not a delegation, a handover of a decision right or an accountability requires high levels of both psychological trust and and accountability trust. Yes. And so you have to be in the learning zone, you know, as she calls it, which is where both of those are high. So if that's the case, right, the question is for the owner, right, a lot of people, and this is very common, is that they've been, their perception is that they've been hard done by, by employees of the past, right? And what? in a lot of cases, it's absolutely true. Right. However, they've got to get over that. Yes. And they've got to say to themselves, okay, am I going to transfer 
my anger to that person to the people that are coming in in the future, right? So the, so the, the question is to invest in mindset, right? Mm-hmm. So what sort of – because to build trust, you've got to genuinely believe in – that any person you're going to work with, you're going to invest in their development, invest in them. So what's so wonderful about an SME is that the vision of the owner, it ideally, right, it needs others to step yes. up. Yes. For them to achieve what they want to achieve. I've I've never heard an owner's vision that doesn't require the development of other leaders. <laughs> so consequently, there's a massive motivation in doing it, but yes. there's usually an incongruity between the vision and the behavior. But but the behavior is 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 valid based upon past experience. So I just think that the first step is just stepping into, you know, just the mindset. Yes. Love know? that. Mm. Yep. Thank you. So my next question then is you've got a specific um stewardship slash um, governance approach that can help um, SMEs set themselves up so that they you know, continue to succeed longer term. Love to hear a bit more about that. Okay. So the reason, first of all, so succession thinking is a solution for the stewardship yes. of an SME. So I've already said that an SME is ownership and leadership. Yes. Right? Stewardship, I picked that term because it, All of my experience is that the reason for a lot of the failures in the corporation is because they're built on a mechanistic metaphor, Mm. whereas really my entire business life is about relationships. And so it's, it's, it's a more biological metaphor. Yeah, I think that principle around stewardship is that because it's more biological, it's more like this. It's not governance tends to be control and compliance and this sort of thing, an authority yes. system, whereas yes. stewardship is more, you know, I called my business originally design, um, adapt by design, right? Nice. And so what I was saying is, okay, let's acknowledge that we have no control, but we are, and we have to adapt to different environments in the marketplace. <laughs> and then, but what we'll do is do our best to do some design work that gives us the agility to be able to adapt, right? So that was the the the, the background and the thinking um, behind that. And so stewardship just seems to me to be a more suitable term for agile SMEs that are driven by entrepreneurs, whereas, you know, a governance I think is a fair term to use yes. in, in, you know, massive organisations and in other sorts of, of organisation types. But... So that's why I say SME stewardship. Yeah. So that's that. And then there's the succession thinking is about the deployment of five principles. So the first principle is seek role clarity, which I've briefly discussed, but yes. I've got an entire logic. There's three yes. natural hierarchies from the um, owner director level, organizational leader, and then operations. And yes. what I usually find in SMEs is, they're operationally, you know, the whole business is operations and they haven't built these other two layers. They haven't got the habits and systems for these other yep. two layers. Nice. So then that's that's role clarity. Then the second principle is build your owner's vision. So mm-hmm. what that is is not a vision in the concept of corporate visions. This is actually what's the manifesto for your business, right? What do you want this business to deliver to you to achieve what you want? Right. Mm. And that's the right of owners. I mean, that's yes. the only reason you go into business is because at the end of the day, it's it's got to deliver something in the world that you want. Right. Yes. So that's it. And then the, the, the last three principles are massive. Right. I mean, to actually deploy them is non-trivial, but yes. build leaders beyond you, build culture beyond you and build your business way. And the fifth principle is the hardest one for people to understand because that is about data and that is about if you're a if you're a building a business for 20 years right yes. or 40 years it's a it's accumulation 
It's a, it's accumulation. It's not about leadership tenures. So this concept of CEOs, I really dislike the term. Yes. I find yes. it, and, and, you know, I don't know why we do it in yeah. the core, in the SME world. So I actually, uh, for all the SMEs I work with, I say that's a corporate brand. If I was you, I would eliminate it because nice. I'm not, I'm not saying that the CEO in the corporate land, that is their, that is their system. They have a yes. board, you know, that are the agents representing the owners that are somewhere else. Then they have an executive that works for the board and then the board goes and gets a CEO. Fine. That's their model. That's not our model. Yes. That's never going to work for an owner. You know, yes. that is too fragile. I mean, they, you know, go get a CEO. Okay. Well, the CEO leaves. Well, where are you as an owner? Well, you, what are you going to do? You're going to, you, you, you're buttering your toast. You get the phone call and you get back into work. No, any form of reentry is failure of succession thinking. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's the problem. We've got to design our businesses with far, far more sophistication than this trivial concept. I'm going to get a CEO or general manager in because that's just obviously flawed. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's just so fragile. Yeah. Yes. I love so, that. Mm-hmm. I could talk to you all day, Bill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so my next one is. Yeah, obviously at the moment there's a lot of um, businesses, the economies aren't all that great. So there'll be some many businesses that are struggling a bit with, yeah, how do we keep going? How do we move forward? So I love your um, ideas about what are some things that those businesses can do to give themselves hope and hopefully to continue to move forward. Yeah, and I think this is a a very um this is a very, very interesting question because the normal response would be to say, you know, I don't know, sell more, <laughs> you know. Wasn't expected. Of I, mean, yeah. I don't know. You know like, like, <laughs> no, I, I, I think a little bit of um, self-care, you know, yes. like I, one of the things that I've, I've picked up on is I, I I've walked into so many SMEs where I go in and say, look, just want to congratulate you on what you've achieved. I'll give you one example. I was, I was working with a, a husband and wife team where they, they built a great business. Mm-hmm. And that, well, what, I, what I mean by that is that they would sustained a business for 20 years and it had created all their wealth. Yeah, yes. it's created, it been fundamental to their wealth. And all of their current ways of viewing their business, they were angry with it, right? Oh, wow. Oh, no, this is common. Most most, most people are. When you really strip it all back and you get away from marketing and get them behind <laughs> the door and say, okay. And what they are is they are usually stuck and overwhelmed, right? Mm-hmm. It's a common thing in SMEs. Yep. They're stuck and overwhelmed. You know, I'm not talking about what they're doing at the barbecue when they're trying to promote their business. I'm talking about when it's all said and done. Yes. And in this case, you know, they just feel like they were that was stuck, right? And that was, but the story they were telling themselves did not include. I just started asking entirely different questions, and it was yes. amazing just hearing. I think we use metrics that are designed by short-term ROI thinkers. Yes. Right? So what do I mean by that? Financial metrics about the EBIT for the past year. Well. Is that really a measure of our business? So they'd been in business for 20 years. So I said to them, what is the sum of all revenue you've ever produced? What is the sum of all receipts sent to the ATO? What is the sum of all the people that you've employed and developed? What is the sum of, and I started doing cumulative statistics as a measure of trying to show to them I said to them, 7% of businesses make it to a revenue of $2 million. Yeah. Well, you've been able to sustain that for the last 10 years. So wow. I, I just started to throwing them. brand new data at them. So yes. what I'm saying is park the car, number one, and and actually just reflect on what you've achieved, right? But then when you park the car and if you can step into this, I'm going to give you a new term, right? Part of being an owner is to be the vision custodian. Yes. And say to yourself, okay, this business right this particular moment is, you know, got some financial pain or it's got some pain. 
Well, you've got to really say to yourself, I mean, it's very difficult to do because you tend to be below the line with fear and anxiety and overwhelm, mm-hmm. but it's very difficult to do. But if you can, and it's often good to have an agent, somebody outside the business that can help you, yes. just to say, okay, what is it that you genuinely want this business to deliver to you? Genuinely. What does it, what do you want to build a business for the long term? Are you building this business to sell it at some stage? Are you, you know, do you want to hold on to the business but get a lot of discretionary time back? What is it you want? And that I think is the place that I, I think that we do too much reaction. So if we, if we can't click out of reactivity and go to proactive behaviors. Yes. So that's what I would say, you know, harness the person that founded the business. Yes. Yeah. Love that. And I love the short term versus long term thinking and your use of questions. Cause I, I, and so now I've got a question about what is your most favorite question that opens people's brains up? I'll tell you what I do yes. in the first five or 10 minutes of meeting. So I have, a set of cards. In actual fact, if you go to Kochi's Business Builders, yes, yep. right. I was, uh, I did some work with Matt Harrison, yes, and and I I played the cards, so you can actually watch a video on this. Oh, cool! We'll okay. we'll put a link in the podcast descriptions. So yeah, yeah, can go there. Cool. Yeah. So so let me just let me just show you. So I say to them, I say to them. Are you the owner of your business? I just laid these out on the cards. I love it. I mean, yep. We're usually in a cafe, right? Yes. And I say, a, an owner, a person who has the decision rights associated with capital and vision. That's my yep. definition. Nice. And they go, yes, I am. I say, and th- this is fascinating. I say, are you a director of the business? And some of you say, yeah, I think so. <laughs> But anyway, a person who has the fiduciary responsibilities of the business, in most SMEs, this relates to keeping people safe, making sure the business is solvent, right? Yes. So that's, then I say to them, okay, who sets the values of the business and what you really care for and don't care for? You know, and I say, are you this? And they go, nice. yeah, yeah, that's me. And then I said, okay, so who who sets the, all the strategy at the moment? You know, like I, I believe you're going to open an office in Sydney. Who who made that decision? Oh, yeah, that's me. So I say a person who is responsible for the formation and implementation of strategy while considering the whole system. Nice. Right? I said, who actually, uh, you know, is the team leader that gets the work done? Da 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 da. And so I hold up this one, right? And and as I say, so that you're the one that is actually involved in making sure that the work and the accountability is getting done. Yes, that's me. Okay. And then I, you know, I, the final one, I say, do you sell your offering? Uh, yes, I do. Do you deliver your offering? Yes, I do. Do you nurture your customers? Yes, I do. So I then show them that they have a stack, you know, it's uh, hard to hold it all up, but they yeah. have a stack. I love that. Them, I say to them, I say to them, genuinely, genuinely, just for when you work with me, all these ones, I'm going to park them up and I'm not going to even talk about this stuff. So you yeah. can, you can say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to work with you on this where you have the subcategory, right, of being a vision custodian. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to help you get clear about the work that you need to do as an owner and as a vision custodian. And that's where we start because the conversations that come from that are huge. Do you know what the, a lot of the real, real thing that often it's, I've had people where they've got a 25% passive owner in an SME and it's just driving the, the active owner, yes. the, 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 the owner leader of the business. It's driving him crazy. Yep. But the rest of the business, it just sees the crazy guy but doesn't understand the complexity of this mm. problem. Yes. So I've, you know, in the last, 
uh, two months, I've helped three different owners deal with the problem of cleaning up passive ownership. And what I do is I usually coach them to abundance, not scarcity. I say, look, nice. you need to you need to step into the shoes of that person. Say, look, this is untenable for me, but what can we do to fix this up? And it's yes. amazing if they do that and they actually do step into trying to solve it for the other person, often they can work something out. And then they clean that up and they can move forward. Yes. So this, it's you. It, it, what I'm saying is seek role clarity, understand you have the hats, then park up the other hats, step into being an owner. That's it. Oh, I love that. I'm glad I asked that question. That was an awesome <laughs> answer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Bill, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners and our viewers? Yeah, look, I find it incredibly challenging. Why do you – no, I'm going to flip it around just for a second. Yeah, of course. Question. Now, you're in the leadership industry, right? Yes. You Training. see this time and time and time again. Why do you think – is there anything in what I'm saying that you would say is irrational? Not at all. Okay. Do you see it being a a requirement for SME owners to start thinking that way? Absolutely, particularly if they want to be long-term. So why do you think that this is such a minority position? Mm -hmm. What what do you think? Well, well, first of all, I have to share with you my my exploration in the last 10 years. I felt like I've been swimming up a waterfall. Wow. Oh, Tell me more. Well, I think we're conditioned to be short-term return on investment thinkers. Yep. And that's the problem I see everywhere. So so that how do we how do we recognize that if we want to build true sustainable value? So I'm not talking about uh the, the people that are going to make the money or the short-term ROI. What I can prove is that the person that invests in this sort of thing, if you measure it in 10 years, they're far wealthier because they've also delivered to the relationships of their life on their mm. other things, but they're also yes. financially sustainable. So yes. it's it's so I guess my point is how do we how do we help people recognize that mm. building having a more long-term view? And I believe that SMEs are sort of like the only entity that can truly do that because yes. once you have once you have 10,000 owners, it's it's almost impossible. Well, it's impossible to to integrate any other vision than short-term ROI. So yeah. that's why the world's gone the way it's gone. So, yeah. okay, so that's my bit. So back to I the love it. So I am very privileged, I reckon. I reckon I'm so lucky. So having run businesses for a long time, I have a, an accounting background, And I work with a lot of global family businesses that are multi-generation. And one of the things, and I'm about to start a series of three books on um, multi-generational family businesses. And the thing I've seen in them is that their purpose is not about short-term thinking. They have the ability to look that longer term because they think generationally. And so that also then shaped how I thought and my husband thinks about this business in the same way that I see a lot of poor short-term decision-making because I work with all pretty much every sector um, to then work with the family businesses that have been around for many generations and just see that different way of thinking. So I'm so on what your your point is there, Bill, because it's absolutely true. Short-term, we tend not to make great decisions if we're – in that scarcity mindset, et cetera. So I love love where you're headed with this. So so the question I ask is how yep. do we make this the mainstream thinking? See, what, what yes. you all just talked about is a, a tiny little sector. It's not a tiny, it's a big sector, but it's, it's a big small. sector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make this, uh, you know, at least make it so that it gets equal airtime to yes. the short-term ROI conversation, yeah. right? Yes, you know how how do we do that? How how do you know the area that you're working in, which yeah. is, I totally understand. You know those yep. the, the the um because I think that family business and SMEs right are uh, I built uh, my SMEs with work brothers and sisters, but yes. they weren't blood. Yes, right? yes. But I don't think 
I think the SME is very close to the family concept just without the yes. In some ways, yes. that can make it simpler. Yes, <laughs> you know, yes, yeah, totally. <laughs> right, because it's one role less. <laughs> but uh, um, anyway, that, I, I, I just leave that question with you. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, I know that great great questions open up people's brains. So we're even having starting conversations in the other sectors about perhaps their frustrations, you know, and the imagine if it was possible that we focused more on the long term versus the short term, what what impacts could that have, not just on the organisation, its people, the communities, the suppliers, the customers, et cetera. So I wonder whether even just starting conversations could be helpful because I, I imagine a lot of people just go, this is just how it is, and it's like, well, does it have to be? The only the only problem with the conversations concept is I've been mm. involved with the conversation. I, I joined the Society of Knowledge Economics, I, I don't know, what was that, about 2005, 2006, and then yep. that rolled on to me becoming a direct, founding director of Conscious Capitalism. Yep. I went to Austin many times. To be frank with you, I, I mean, I'm done to death on movements and conversations. Yep. I mean, it's time for action, you know. And okay. I, yeah, I, action's and always so good. That, that's my, I mean, I guess I'm 63, you know, yes. of, uh, you know I'm running out of time. No, nah, yeah. I'm joking. I'm, I'm just <laughs> saying that, 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 that it just, it seems to me the time is nigh. And yeah. I, so what I've learned is if we can actually actively say SME um, stewardship is a totally yes. different thing to corporate governance. Yes. That might be the place to start. And then the, the universities can move. The, yes. Everybody, everybody can start to, you know, the legislators can move. Because to give you an example, just these are just really practical examples. I mm-hmm. find it absolutely fascinating that we're prepared to tax a non-profitable SME, right? I mean, the immorality of mm-hmm. that through payroll tax. Yes. You know, a non-profitable most people think, oh, okay, you make income and then you pay tax. But with 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 with, with SMEs, we can yes. be making a loss and the yes. government is penalizing you at the same time. It, yes. you know, the immorality of some of these things, you sort of go, Well, people say, Why do you care so much? I say, Well, you think about that. Your government wants to inspire an economy. And SMEs are the startups. That's where all the innovation yeah. tends to take place and da 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 And then what it does is pretty early in your life, it's going to penalise you for employing people. So, so consequently, what's happened is that they say, okay, we've got a Corporations Act. Anybody that can, incorporates as a proprietary limited entity, whether it's an SME or a corporation, we're going to treat them exactly the same. Yeah. Well, they they put... They they muck around with tiny little levers to try and to yeah. differentiate them, but they don't genuinely differentiate them. Mm. And I think that that's um, if if Australia wants to really really head in a different direction and not just go over the same cliff as everyone else and end up. I mean, look at look at what's going on in the US now. They yeah. have recognised that the antitrust legislation is it's brutally difficult to beat the the aggregation capitalism and that Google is now the Google and Facebook and all these businesses, Apple, they're almost beyond any antitrust yeah. legislation. Yes. Now, yes. if we just let aggregation capitalism go, we'll, we'll only end up with one airline, one supermarket, one as it is, what do we got? Two, two. And so SMEs just seem to me to be, the real producers, I mean, the food producers for a start, if you could just consume, connect the uh, producers to the yes. consumers, well, wouldn't the cost of everything go down? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. you're getting some of my passion. But anyway. I love it. Love it. Well, love I love just it. think the SMEs are the originators of things. Yes. You know? yep. So let's let's give them greater, let them get greater value for their effort. Nice, nice. Love that and totally agree too. Yeah. <laughs> so I reckon there's probably some listeners and viewers that would love to have a conversation with you. So where would they best um, reach out to you? Yeah, I've got a um, – so Adapt is the company that I'm mm-hmm. taking succession thinking to the world. Nice. So there's two – there's um, the 
adaptway.com yes. is, is one place they can go. But if they want to get just information about the book, they can go to uh, successionthinking.com, www.successionthinking.com. Nice. And if they do that, they can – there's two buttons there. You can get information about where to get the book, but there's another button that takes you and you can just um, uh, put in your name and, and we'll send information and get in contact with uh, with me or, or whoever. It's Excellent. just that we've got a system to collect that uh, Perfect. That, that feedback. No, but, that's... yeah, and um, I'm, I'm also writing many articles and many uh, – there's a lot going on at the moment. Nice. But what I'll do is I'll also make sure that all that material is up on successionthinking.com. Excellent. Beautiful. Well, Bill, it's been an awesome conversation and we're definitely on the same page. So um, before I go, I'll just say to our viewers and our listeners, we wish you all a magical week. And, Bill, can I say thank you so much for joining us on the Magical Learning Podcast? Thanks, Jeanette. No, that was fun. <laughs>